Hello, 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 hello. So, let's solve the problem that I also solved 87 years ago when I was a physics high school teacher in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, in what's called the Lieberman Lyceum. You ready for that? You see me here when I was 25 years old. I'm standing on the floor in the classroom. And in this classroom, there was an elevator. And the elevator was being accelerated upwards with acceleration A. And inside the elevator is a pulley. Here is a pulley. The pulley is attached with a string to the top of the elevator. The axle here is frictionless, the pulley is a solid disc with uniform mass density, total mass capital M, radius capital R. On this side of the pulley is a string at the end mass M1, on this side a mass M2. You can ignore the mass of the strings because they are negligibly small compared to all the others. Key is that this string will never slip on the pulley. That's an essential part for our solutions. And the question was, that the only questions I asked, what is the tension in this string? And when I, Walter Lewin, look at this object M1, in what direction will I see the acceleration, either up or down, and what will be its magnitude? Okay, ready? Let's first put in all the forces that we will need. The tension in this string, capital T. And gravitational force down, capital MG. The tension in this string here, T1, upwards here, downwards there. The tension in this string, T2, upwards here, downwards there. Gravitational force down here, M1G, gravitational force down here, M2G. Now, before we're going to compose the uh, equations of motion, let's step inside the elevator. So you and I are now inside the elevator. We know that this pulley is going to rotate clockwise. The reason why we know that is that M2 is smaller than M1. So we know that if we stand in the elevator, we will see this object being accelerated downwards with acceleration A prime, and this one will be accelerated upwards with the same acceleration A prime. Now, of course, if later on we want to know what the acceleration is of this object as seen by Walter, we have to add, of course, vectorially this A. But these A primes are inside the elevator. So let's now start with the tension T. The tension T that I have here, minus mg, is here, minus T1, minus T2, minus T1 equals MA because this object is being accelerated with acceleration A upwards. Let's now go to this object. T1 upwards minus M1G downwards 
equals m1, but now you have to take the factorial sum of this one and this one. And so that is a minus a1. a is in this direction, a1 is in that direction. Now we go to this one. t2 is upwards, m2g is downwards, minus sign. And that is m2 times the acceleration of this object, but that is a prime plus a. So now you see a prime plus a. And then we get the torque equation. Again, you can step inside the elevator, that's perfectly okay. There's a clockwise torque, positive torque T1 times radius R, this, this angle is 19 degrees, and negative torque T2 times R, also 19 degrees. So T1 minus T2 times capital R is the clockwise torque of this system. That is the moment of inertia of this disk, which is one half mR squared, times alpha. Alpha is d omega dt. It is the angular acceleration. And if you revisit, if you do me a favor and you revisit our yo-yo problems, you will remember that if there is no slip, that this alpha is the same as this acceleration in this rope divided by r. In other words, alpha is a prime divided by r because there is pure roll condition. Four equations with four unknowns. t, t1, t2, and a prime. I think the fastest way to solve this, to start with this equation and to replace T1 minus T2 by the difference between two equations, which is T1 minus T2. You then have one equation only with A and A prime. End of story. So you immediately find A prime. And this is the result. There are two interesting things that you should check always. We call that consistency checks. When m1 equals m2, it's obvious that this is not going to rotate. So if m1 equals m2, a prime must be zero. If m1 equals m2, a prime is zero. I have assumed that the rotation would be in this direction because I knew already that this mass is larger than that one. However, this equation is sign sensitive. That means if it turned out later, if I put in numbers, which I haven't done yet, if I put in that m2 is larger than m1, I will simply find that this a prime is not in this direction, but in that direction. And this a prime is in that direction. So I didn't even have to assume that it was going to go clockwise. The beauty about mass is that these equations are sign sensitive. Another interesting thing. Suppose you let the evaluate the You let this box, elevator, go into free fall. So you cut the cable at the top and the whole system free falls down. That means A is now minus G. When A is minus G, this tension goes to zero, this tension goes to zero, this tension goes to zero, I prime, A prime goes to zero. Put in A equals minus G. A prime goes to zero. Go here. A prime is zero. A is minus G. T1 will be zero. And the same is true for T2. So all these equations, 
are very reassuring that we did it right. Once you have A prime, it is trivial to calculate T1. Because if you go to this equation, you now know A prime, you already knew A M1, and so you immediately find T1. That's why I only gave you this equation. And the same is true for T2. The moment you have A prime, you find immediately T2. And the moment that you find T1 minus T2, you find with this equation immediately T. So this is really at the heart of the problem. So if now substitute these numbers that we have, 5 meters per second square, 4 kilograms, 0.1 meters, aha, did you notice that capital R doesn't enter into anywhere? Isn't that interesting? Look at this equation. This R, R squared over R, cancel. M equals 1 is 2 kilograms, 1 kilogram, and 10 meters per second squared. If I substitute those numbers in my equations, I find for T, 102 newtons. And I find for A prime, 3 meters per second squared in this direction. Because it's positive, because M1 is larger than M2. So now, when Walter Rubin looks at this object, it's going down with 3 meters per second square, but up with 5 meters per second square. So the net result is that what I will see when I stand here, the acceleration of the object M1 will be upwards with 2 meters per second square. I didn't ask you what the acceleration, acceleration was of this object when I look at it. That obviously would be 3 plus 5 would be 8 meters per second square upwards. So you put in the numbers for A minus A1, and you get a T1, and you will get T2. This is in Newtons, this is in Newtons. Interesting problem, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got to be rigid on your math, very consistent with your times, with your science, I mean, consistent with the science of what is plus and minus. But it's not a very difficult problem. That's why I gave it to high school students in 1961 at the Lebanon Lyceum in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And if any one of you <laughs> was in my class then, just send me a note, will you? You may remember the solution. Have a nice day, take care, and of course we will be friends.